Will the Arbiter return? Who is the Harbinger? And will Halo Infinite look completely different than it did in the initial reveal? Well, in this video, I'm going to answer all of your burning questions. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the information. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another video today. Today we're doing a bit of a Q&A with the community here where I pick out a few of the questions left on my community page here on my YouTube channel. And I posted on that community page recently asking, do you guys have any questions about Halo Infinite? Feel free to ask them and I'll put them in a the video. And boy did you guys respond with 70 plus comments on that so I had to chop it up into two separate videos to pick all the good stuff. If you want to take part in the next Q&A, make sure you guys are subscribed to know when I do post on the community page here so you can get your question in and hopefully get part of a video. Aether Chase asks, do you think the Arbiter might play a role in Halo Infinite? This is kind of interesting to see what they're going to do about it because it seems like this is going to be a Master Chief focused story and it seems like it's going to be kind of like Master Chief on the ring trying to figure it out, much like how we had in Combat Evolved. I think what we're going to know about the Arbiter is going to come through the book Shadows of Reach, which comes out later this month in October. Or that book's kind of meant to set the stage of and the tone of the universe at the time of the game release. It's supposed to kind of echo what the Fall of Reach did for Combat Evolved. Obviously, you don't need to read the book to un have to enjoy the game. But I think we might see some Arbiter plot points come out in Shadows of Reach. The last thing we saw him, he was with Master Chief and Halsey and a group of bunch of other Spartans and Spartan Lock as well. They're all together. Like, what's going to happen for after that scene? We don't know. Now, there are going to be plot points within Shadows of Reach that have come to fruition within the game of Halo Infinite that was stated in the recent interview about Shadows of Reach, which I did have a video guys on it on the, going in depth about that interview. You guys want to watch that video, link in the description down below. But if the Arbiter is in Halo Infinite, I think it'd be a very small role, maybe just kind of like a little homage, maybe like one mission kind of thing or something like that, but I don't think it'd be a major part of the game like in Halo 2 or Halo 3. Probably even less of a role than Halo 5. Adam Lundstrom asks, I just want comment need a flood reveal then i can sleep soundly at night well adam i'm sorry to say i think you might have to kind of wait until the release of the game itself and here is why because we do know that this game is meant to be a soft reboot with a lot of influence from combat evolved and imagine how it would have felt if we knew that the flood was going to be in halo ce before that game's launch it'd make that moment in the game when they come out and they come out and to attack you it would completely lose that experience. I can already see just like the reaction videos getting posted up on YouTube. Everyone posted a bit of a like a reaction video of their like experience when it comes to the flood reveal in Halo Infinite. Like that's definitely going to be a thing. And I know as Halo fans, we all are, we want to know as much as we can about Halo Infinite before the release. But the thing is, so some things just need to be left unknown. This game is putting a big emphasis on exploration and a big part about exploration is going to places unknown and knowing like literally everything about the game before you even play it kind of ruins the experience of well playing the game personally i think the flood will return in halo infinite i'd be very very surprised if they do not return and i would prefer it to not be revealed at all until the game is out for everyone to play and experience that for themselves so will the flood return in halo infinite i say yes but will we know about it before the release of the game absolutely no woody asks what do you think about a firefight mode and how do you think it should be implemented as part of the campaign purchase like Reach and ODST? Additionally, what do you think about the Prometheans being involved with it and not just like a bunch of Warden Eternals? I did touch on this actually in a previous video as well, talking about how just like the cost of a $60 game for Halo Infinite and so for all we know for sure, that's going to be the campaign for 60 bucks. It seems a little bit high for a campaign, especially since the multiplayer is going to be free. I mean, I would assume that like Forge and probably maybe even Theater maybe might be tied to the full price version of the game. I was just talking about how the you know 343 needs to figure out a way to try to convert these free to play players to buying the game and getting more involved with the universe of Halo. Obviously being free to play is a great way to get people into it, but what's gonna be like the game mode that makes you gonna want to buy the game? Which I would think had to be some kind of PVE kind of mode, which Firefight would kind of make sense, but I think that 343 would really have to go all out on Firefight to really make it something special. If it's just like wave-based, four players, you know, survive as long as you can kind of thing, 
And from what we've had previously, I don't really know if it'd be much of a selling point for people to jump in and play since the creation of Firefight was really just like a response to the Gears of War series with the popularity of, of their horde mode. I mean, if we're talking like some all out like 50 player versus enemies, love like AI enemies kind of game battles kind of stuff like that, that would be insane and something I would absolutely love to see have some large scale kind of like battlefield-esque kind of like stuff against the AI. I think that'd be freaking sweet. But do I think Firefight will be in Halo Infinite? Eh, kind of a coin toss really. 343 has never released a game with Firefight in it. And yes, Firefight is like a rather popular mode within the Halo franchise. We also, I think it's always like probably like the top 20 most played modes within Halo 5 right now. And that's even kind of like a nerfed version of Firefight. Uh, though I don't really know if they will bring it because I think they're going to put a lot more emphasis on replayability within the campaign. ACL2 asks, if you were to choose the launch game types for Halo Infinite multiplayer, which would you choose out of all the game types from all the other Halos? Okay, for my game modes, I think you're going to be a little surprised what I'm going to choose here. So for your social game modes, you'll have Team Slayer, Free For All, BTB, Action Sack, Infection, SWAT, Team Doubles, Team Snipers, and a personal choice, I would love to see Invasion come back. Now those are all of these social game modes. Now for ranked, I would honestly like to see just one mode. Just have it be like the hardcore playlist that's your one ranked mode. For you know, it has a mix of like Slayer, CTF, Strongholds, Oddball, or whatever kind of new mode they want to throw in there. I've always kind of had the feeling that you need to always consolidate the ranked playlists when it comes to uh, having competitive experience when it comes to playing Halo. Yes, I know there's a long hit stand in history of having like ranked Team Slayer, ranked this, ranked like every playlist has a rank, and then you have a social version of the all the exact same stuff. We could do that back in the day with like Halo 2 and Halo 3 because it was the biggest game at the time. So it, you can pull off that kind of stuff. Halo's kind of have to, you know come from the ground up kind of situation. And there are various games out there that are super popular that, you know, they have one ranked mode and it's like your standard ranked playlist that you would have. And it's like their hardcore, like MLG try hardy kind of playlist. So honestly, I like to see everything just kind of move to social so you can ease off on the skill based matchmaking a little bit, widen the gaps a little bit so you can just jump in and have some fun. And if you want to sweat it up, you play the MLG hardcore HCS settings for your one playlist. Again, that's just my opinion. I understand people's wants and needs on for like ranked Team Slayer, ranked free for all and things like that. But honestly, in my opinion, I feel that a lot of those modes should just be social and you have ranked for your MLG HCS settings, and maybe like a ranked free for all as well for people to kind of make a name for themselves to kind of get into the pro scene as well. And that's just my opinion on that one. Spiel asks, who do you think the Harbinger is? Now there is a lot of speculation, obviously, to who the Harbinger is. I went to Halopedia and all he said, it's an entity within Halo Infinite that's apparently sided with uh, Eshram and Aatrox kind of thing. But I think the important thing to try to speculate of who the Harbinger is, is to ask the question of what is a Harbinger? And on Webster's Dictionary, it says this, the Harbinger is something that foreshadows a future event. Something that gives an anticipatory sign of what is to come. Or one that initiates a major change, a person or thing that originates or helps open up new activity, method, or technology. Basically, it's like a sign of something to, th uh, to bring in things to come kind of thing. Obviously, something to come would be the Banish taking over the galaxy. Now, what or who would be able to help the Banish when it comes to taking over the galaxy is really up for debate. Harbinger could be a reference to the Guardians that they may have a name for. You know, they did be a Guardian at the end of Halo Wars 2, which obviously had the Banish on there. Could the Harbinger be Mendicant Bias? It does seem to be kind of alluded to that he will be on Zeta Halo as there is like a station of holding that holds Mendicant Bias is there. I think it's empty right now, but I mean, hell, it could be activated with space magic or something like that. And there's this one scene within Halo Infinite on the one of the trailers where you can see like three red dots on Chief's visor. What character has three red dots to show up? Well, Mendicant Bias and say, when Mendicant Bias returns, he can be the harbinger of a new essence of decade of uh, empire or something like that. I have a feeling the harbinger is somebody completely different. Something we haven't seen in Halia. It's not, I don't think it's going to be Cortana. I mean, it could be the Guardians, 
but I feel like it might be something a little different. Again, I think we'll know a lot more when it comes to the created versus the creators kind of story arc that was created in Halo 5 with Cortana and the Guardians whole thing. I think we'll see some kind of plot movement happen within Shadows of Reach for that. And I think it will come up in Halo Infinite at some point. In what way? We don't know. Fuzzy Power asked, do you think we'll introduce a revamped version of Warzone for Infinite? I think the mode was great, but it needed a lot more structure and less RNG, as the pay to win part of the mode only worsened as the time went by. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Warzone did rather well for Halo 5 for a brand new mode. It certainly helped promote people buying rec packs and stuff like that to try to boost up some microtransaction sales and things like that. I mean, Warzone was always like a top five most played mode in Halo 5, and Halo 5 built Warzone off of the reception of BTB in Halo 4. I think Warzone could use a little bit of a love when it comes to making it a little bit more fun of a mode. I think having the enemies being so predictable and bullet spongy not really doing just kind of standing there really uh and having yes obviously killing some bosses would help you win the game just only like that last bullet make a difference when it comes to who earns the points it feels rather annoying where you can have the whole team just shoot an enemy knock it down to 99 percent health the other enemy team comes in with like a rocket launcher shoots it kills it they get all the points like it just doesn't really seem that fair honestly if 343 kind of took cues from a lot of these different kind of games like monster hunter or dauntless even if you guys don't know about that game definitely check it out where it's like you know four players versus like an enemy ai character kind of thing but they have you know strategic like attack moves and um, you have different dodging maneuvers you gotta do and things like that. You gotta time different attacks that they do. And they do different attacks that do different types of damages and things like that. It just varies with the gameplay to make it much more interesting and fun. I think also having more capture points would be really helpful as well, as most people just kind of fought over the center hill point. I think having an odd number is important, but they were generally just like two bases and then you had like the one base most people fought over and then you had maybe just random battles here and there. I think if they went with the more battlefield approach and had a lot of different capture points, I think they'd be a lot more useful way to try to spread out the gameplay and have it be a little bit more dynamic. And we're not gonna have this division kind of like we did with Warzone and Arena modes. And we do know that there will be no paid loot boxes in Halo Infinite, but that doesn't necessarily mean it cancels out loot boxes altogether. I think 343 recognizes the want for a large scale game mode like BTB or Warzone. It's I think so. we'll have something like that. Will it be Warzone 2.0? I mean, we've seen leaked rumors of it throughout the development of Halo Infinite. I mean, I certainly would like a different version of it. It was good in concept, but uh, I didn't really like it as much just because I think just like the game type itself needed a lot of work and polish to make it a little bit more fun and dynamic. I, I got, I'm, I'm kind of a coin flip on this, so if we'll see it in Halo Infinite, I don't know, but maybe. Long Brother asks, do you think Halo Infinite will look and feel completely different if 343 work their butts off just like Bungie did at the end of Halo 2? I even remember hearing that Bungie completely scratched the engine used in the 2004 E3 demo and started from the ground up, which means they only had a year to create the engine. Do you think 343 will pull off something that crazy? Now, when it comes to completely scrapping things, when it comes to Halo 2, I think they just had to just really kind of focus in on exactly what can make the game work well. When it comes about scratching the engine, they didn't really scratch the engine, they changed the lighting engine of the game, which completely changed like the visuals of the game as well, because obviously, uh, how game well how good a game looks is directly tied to the lighting. I mean, they're still working with the engine and everything else like that, but they were just had like all these different kind of ideas and things they wanted to implement, but they're all just kind of half-baked ideas. They just kind of went like, screw it let's just try go back to the drawing board let's make something that we know can work and we can do it within a year and i know for sure 343 is definitely gonna be working their butts off when it comes to trying to get out halo infinite as soon as possible if they're trying to push like for a spring release which i don't know maybe from the recent reveals we've seen for the uh, hts series coming around that i know we'll definitely see a lot better functionality when it comes to the lighting but from what we saw guys that's the game like that's how halo infinite is going to look I think we'll see improvements on the functionality when it comes to draw distance and seeing pop in textures and items and things like that or geometry. Uh, we'll see improvements when it comes to the functionality of lighting because if you remember when he exits out of that menu for the world map, you see like the lighting load in very obviously. I think we'll see if, uh, some streamlining of those kind of effects, but how the game looks, maybe some ambient occlusion added in there as well. Uh, that's what the game looks like, guys. Like. 
this is Halo Infinite. I don't think we're going to see any drastic changes. Like, this game's been in development for so long, and the ship's been moving this way for so long, you can't just turn it on a dime. This is a large ship with a lot of moving parts, and it's not like you can just, like, you know, drift the Titanic, you know, to dodge that iceberg. The iceberg being the, like, release date, the, the, the inevitability that's going to happen kind of thing. I'm not saying that this is, like, a ship that's going to sink. Well, like, if you get the analogy. But I think, like, the textures are going to be looking the same, the character models are going to be looking the same, uh, I think like all the pillars that we're going to be seeing in like the reveal trailer for the ca campaign, those are all going to still be there. I think we're just going to see a little bit better lighting. We're going to see it with RTX because I think RTX was meant to be patched in, I think early in 2001, like around probably February or something like that, which RTX will certainly help out a ton when it comes to the shadowing of the areas and the reflection of light within the environments. But from what we've seen, like that's Halo Infinite guy. And so if you don't like what you saw, I can understand your concerns. I think, like I said, to reiterate, I think we're only going to see improvements on the functionality of the game rather than the visual presentation of it. Like, that's how the weapons look. Those are the grunts. Those are the brutes. Those are the elites. This is the environment. Halo Infinite's already, already set to be like the largest game ever created. It's You can't just scrap everything and start all over a new game with Halo Infinite. It would take another at least three years if you're going to do that. So that about does it and wraps up this Q&A video, guys. If you like, like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know when we see some more content like this. Check out the videos on the screen right over here. I got a link to all my other videos. If you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so, we've been uploading nearly daily, so you might have missed something. So check out those videos, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.